That evening, after the files were safely emailed, the two of us headed into town. We waited at a nearby bus stop, then took a bus to the next town over. On the way, I gave Daigo Kun a general overview of everything Uchiyama-san had told me. He folded his arms in contemplation. Hmm. Oh yeah, there was something about her roommate, um, which was never seen by anyone else or something, right? Maybe she just up and vanished. Maybe she is the ghost. Wait, they don't? What about... What if you're a woman that enjoys the company of other women? Hmm. But they let someone... They let couples in? Really? Huh. He looked so blatantly disappointed I couldn't help but giggle. <laughs> Poor guy. Oh god, no. Don't crush him now. It could also be a compliment. What a cutie. <laughs> Smiling to myself, I gazed outside the window. We'd come pretty far into the central downtown area by now, and our stop was fast approaching. The bus turned onto another street, and the sunset rays blindsided me. I reached up to pull the window shade down. Just then, the sun slipped behind a skyscraper, casting a shadow over the bus. What's happening? I let out a tiny squeak? Why? Daigakun called out an alarm behind me. Is it following us? Definitely sure. The hand I saw reflected on my shoulder in the window. Oh fuck, I didn't pay attention. Can we go back? We can't go back to the, to the background. Shit. It was just a trick of the shadows. No way in hell was I about to let that thing follow me everywhere. I whipped the window shade down and sat back in my seat. Then I heard the bus driver announce our stop. Okay. Club Barry was a hostess club located deep in the heart of the downtown area. Daikokun and I stopped by at a nearby diner to grab a quick bite to eat, then headed for the club. This was the place where President Koyama's paramour allegedly worked. Worked, sorry. Neither of us were especially familiar with this sort of establishment. Mm hmm. We went in preparing to stick out like a couple of sore thumbs, but once we were actually inside, we realized we'd been worried for nothing. Why? The inside of the club was dimly lit, with about 10 tables scattered around. That's not a lot. The interior wasn't too fancy either. Evidently, this club was on a dingy end of the scale. Ooh, sexy music. We took our seats at the table and requested a hostess with the longest tenure. After a moment, a woman much older than me appeared, her face full of heavy makeup. How can you tell? Hmm. Eriko put on a professional smile and promptly served us our drinks. Straight to the gist of it, huh? No. I'd get weak if I heard someone talk about me like that. Oh, he's so young. <laughs> oh, if he, if he isn't popping a bone in there, I don't know. He might be gay. She slid in close to him and ran a hand down his thigh. Oh my god, he seemed quite flustered. Apparently he wasn't used to this sort of attention. <laughs> Unfortunately, I needed to use him as bait if I wanted to hostess to answer my questions. Eriko-san perked up and nodded. Did you serve him too? Yes. Emina-chan is in the room, but... 
あの子が帰国したら来なくなっちゃったけど。You know, that was easier than I thought it would be. We already have a name and we have another hint towards the rumor that she went home to her home country. But where was Emina Chan from again? And do you know anything else about her? Then did she go back to the Philippines after all? So much for the theory that she was Motoko san's roommate. Emina san, te, it's goro kikoku stan d e s k At this, Eriko san stared at me and fell silent. Ano, nani ka? There's a hand on your shoulder! <laughs> Had I struck a nerve? I shot Daigoku in a puzzled glance. Then Eriko san lowered her voice. Ne, masaka k e i s a t s I shook my head, but Eriko san's sharp gaze didn't waver. Apparently, whenever they ask, Are you a cop? you have to answer truthfully that you are a cop. You, you don't have to tell them up front, but if they ask you, you have to admit the truth. Uh, just investigating and stuff. Apparently, something I said made her put her guard up. I gave a quick rundown of everything happening back at Chatelet Roman. Oh, okay, we just. just tell this woman everything, I guess. <laughs> Once she decided it wasn't with the cops, her expression softened. So, you got an ano? Yene, Emina chan, who hosts you on that takara? Mm hmm. And what about our ghost story then? <laughs> In other words, she hadn't obtained a proper work visa. If she was caught, she would have been deported on the spot. No wonder she thought we were cops then. Emina <laughs> chan. Six months. Huh. It's quite a long time. She didn't fucking leave. She stayed in the country and、um, Daigo Kun's sister hit her or something. So, no, this go? Eh, ne, Mari chan. Eriko san turned and called out to an innocent looking young woman nearby. When Mary turned to look, Eriko san waved her over. Mary chan, kono kek san tachi, Emina chan no koto kiki t a i n a t t e Mary took a seat at the attendant station and bowed politely. Konnichiwa, Mary des. Yoroshiku onegai shimas. Oh, she's a real foreigner? Thick accent aside, I found I could understand her just fine. Eriko san poured a drink for Mari chan. Mari chan mo Filipina na no. Tokyo da kara, Emina chan to a naka yo katta no yo ne. Both from the Philippines, okay? Hi. Emina ni wa to te mo naka yo ku shite mora imashita. Wait, um, they speak English on the Philippines, right? It's one of their,、uh, um, languages, so I guess that's where the accent is from? She nodded with a sad smile. My remark had been casual at best, and yet I noticed a slight pause in her response. I glanced at Eriko san, but evidently she'd lost interest now that Mary was the focus of the conversation, as she was busy flirting with Daigo kun. <laughs> she didn't seem particularly interested in me, but that was fine. Daigo kun was so flustered with Eriko san hanging all over him. It was actually a little painful to watch. Oh god. But he'd have to deal with it for a little longer. <laughs> Mary paused. It wasn't an awkward pause, though. I got the sense she was merely searching for the right words. I wonder if this is what I sound like when I try to speak Japanese. Because it doesn't sound too bad, actually. Then again, I, I don't often speak it since I, I'm not that good at it yet. So far, Kuyama sounded like any other patron. It sounded to me like she was keeping the details of the relationship vague on purpose. Mary thought for a moment. After work? 
Not the most popular guy around then, maybe he didn't have a harem of paramours after all. Just then I felt a tap on my arm. I glanced over to find Daikun imploring me silently with his eyes. Erekon's son slung around his neck. Why, dude? Just take it. Take it and give it. Maybe he's close to his limit, huh? As for Erika's son, she was eager to get him to keep drinking with her. At this point, I was starting to feel genuinely bad for him. No, you're just jealous. Daigukun nodded vigorously, piping up with a fabricated excuse of his own invention. <laughs> Maybe he just wasn't cut out for clubbing. Once we finished paying our bill, I dragged the tottering Daigukun outside. Man, now I want to go to a hostess club in Japan. He had a thousand yard stare, his cheeks covered with bright red lipstick marks. Wow, she really liked him. So this is... Is this one step below prostitution basically? A hostess club? It's just giving kisses and stuff. It's just like a strip club? Like a more elegant strip club maybe? But it just spend time with you and sometimes like give you a little bit on the side? I don't know. His eyes widen in terror. I felt a little guilty seeing the relief on his face. Our next destination was quite possibly going to be even more awkward for him. Truth be told, I just felt like going since we were in the area. Oh? Before we could take another step, a voice called out to us from behind. We turned to find Mary's son standing there. Timidly, she walked right up to me and whispered in my ear. Oh, the plot thickens. Was this about Emina? It's a beautiful name. Mary's son nodded. I wasn't surprised considering La Mer was fairly infamous in these parts. Mary's son nodded and went back into Clubberry. Whatever it was she wanted to discuss, she seemed hesitant to do so around other people. Once she was gone, Daigukun and I headed down the bustling street. So are we heading to this club now? To this bar? <laughs> as soon as I walked in, Mama Nancy pulled me into a big bear hug. This level of familiarity was reserved for us regulars, but to Daigo-kun it seemingly, seemingly came as quite a shock. What? What's happening? You little slice of cheesecake, I have to remember that one. Daigakun smiled stiffly as Mama Nancy pulled him into a hug, then escorted us to a table in the back. As we took our seats in the booth, senior staff Anachan squeezed in next to us. The fuck? As it happened, La Mer was a drag queen bar. Okay. So, the dude on the left is Mama Nancy and... Well... Can you call drag queens dudes? Or uh, I use dude rather genderless, but still. So to the left is Mama Nancy and to the right is Anna-chan, I guess. They didn't put on any drag shows, but Mama's magnetic charm meant she always had a full house. I used to come here all the time, back before I moved away. So you're 
っこしてなかったそうよお手伝いに行くって言ったのに断っちゃうんだからあら釣れないアナちゃん passed out a warm damp, damp hand towel to each of us as she spoke Last time I was here, they threw me a little party to celebrate my getting a new apartment. Yeah, let's tell them about the ghosts and stuff. Across the table, Mama began to pour drinks for us. Her muscular body pressed right up against Daigoku. In contrast, Anna chan was on the slender side, with a flamboyant tattoo peeking out from the back of her dress. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it fucking is. <laughs> Both Daigukun and I felt silent in unison. Actually, Daigukun had been quite to begin with, considering he was wrapped up in Mama's embrace. Maebara? <laughs> Her arm around Daigokun's hips, Mama furrowed her brow as though she recognized the name. Daigokun seemed to notice this too. Chateau Romane is an apartment. Do you know it? What? Dai is also there too. Evidently, he'd made it to nickname, status, and record time. I live in the upper floor of Kai's room. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. ねえアンナうんそもそも高山ちゃんの囲い部屋だしねママ高山社長も知ってるの They all seem to know him somehow Why? I hadn't expected to hear the name here of all places I took my drink and learned, leaned forward across the table 知ってるも何もうちの乗客よ高山ちゃん確か近くのホステスにお熱だったじゃないアンナうんあの子…嫌だ…なんて名前だっけ Just then, the front door jingled. いらっしゃいあら…マリーちゃん Daigokun looked over my shoulder at the door, then lifted his hand in a slight wave. I turned to look and sure enough, there stood Mary's son in her street clothes. She looked a lot different in a thin knit sweater and jeans compared to her work uniform. ママ、マリーさんのこと知ってるの I waved at Mary's son as she approached and Mama nodded. Mary's son sat down beside me in the booth. Anna chan seemed to sense the tension in the air as she handed Mary's son her wet towel. Any regular of this bar was bound to feel the same. The place was actually rather well suited to business conversations. Even the seating was strategi uh, strategically placed to minimize potential eavesdropping. This was how Mama continued to expand her network of contacts. So, ne. Tashka Koyama chan ga onetsu datta no te, Mari chan no otomodachi no Emina chan datta no yo ne. Unsurprisingly, Mama was clearly up to speech. Or rather, already. So let's hear her side of the story. Mama must have sensed where this conversation was headed. She bowed out of the conversation, choosing instead to whip us, whip us up some bar snacks. Mary san took a sip of a drink and looked at me and Daigokun in turn. Come to think of it, Mary san hadn't been there for the explanation. I decided to give her, Mama, and Anachan a quick general overview of all that has happened since my move in day. Once I was finished, Mary sent pause for a moment, then began to speak. You're fucking bonkers! There are no ghosts in this world! She would have sent a message, at the very least, I think. Daikokun looked puzzled. 
Yamina knew Kyotakura. That wasn't the right question. But before I could ask, Mama beat me to it. And why did you lie and tell everyone you saw her off? That was the biggest mystery of all. Hmm. In other words, her name wasn't mentioned in the final call for no show passengers. Mary nodded. So this dude, um, Koyama-san, he got her before she could board the flight and he killed her or something? Hmm. Why was he buying tickets for him? Anna-chan had a point. It was unusual, but by no means the final nail in the coffin. Huh? Who sent it? Mama folded her arms in contemplation. I decided to ask the question I knew was on her mind. What's gross? It's kind of good for the ladies. Mama snickered. Okay, yeah, maybe it's gross if you consider what he wants in return. And how he acts when he doesn't get it, I don't know. Oh, okay. So he likes... Foreign types? I don't know. I wouldn't necessarily call uh, the Philippines foreign types in Japanese or in Japan. Since they look, they look not, they don't look the same, but they look similar. If he was only gunning for Europeans or something, I don't know. Oh. Okay. Oh. So did he toss her like yesterday's trash as well, maybe? The man sounded like he'd been an awful piece of work while he was alive, like he couldn't stare down at his drink, grimacing. Anachan busily poured another round of drinks. God, if we find out that his sister was also used by him. Mama laughed and gave Daigo-kun a patronizing hug. だから小山ちゃんが女を囲うのは必ず自分のお友達の物件だったの。なるほど。Oh, 
This wife of his sounded like a rather dangerous individual. She's in hospital right now though, isn't she? Oh my god, is this because why she is? Is this the reason why she's in hospital? The ghost got her? <laughs> From the way she looked laid up in that hospital bed, I never would have guessed. Mama smirked. The look in her eyes suggested that this was the real clincher of it all. Oh, oh. It felt like I was digging my way to the heart of the matter bit by bit. I'd never been more sure of anything in my life. Wrong time for a joke, Nancy. Mama wrapped her arms around a teary-eyed Daigo-kun and planted a few enthusiastic kisses all over his face. Déjà vu. I bet he wishes himself back to the hostess club right now. Ma? <laughs> Oh, we know already, come on. We know it's his sister. Mama looked a little guilty. I smiled and shook my head. Anachan took my hand and gazed at me with tearful, anxious eyes. <laughs> he lost his voice for a bit there, I think. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mama pulled away from Daigo-kun completely. She squinted at me dubiously, but I laughed, shook my head, and waved away her suspicions. Oh god, poor Daigo. <laughs> Mama turned and shot Daigo Kun a sympathetic look. In the end, Mama nearly dragged us to an after party, but I insisted on taking a highly sloshed Daigo Kun home, Jesus, <laughs> so we hailed a taxi. <laughs> It had been a very fruitful evening, but I was ready to drop. Once we arrived back at Chatelet Roman, I took us straight up to apartment 301, and the two of us crawled into bed together. <laughs>